into Christian Europe by the returning soldiers of the Crusades. Ideas such as private ownership of medical practices were not to their liking. So, in the late 12th century AD, these conspirators sent the Knights Templar, adjunct to the Priory of Zion, to investigate the origins for the knowledge of Asclepius' caudices brought back by the Hospitallers. The Knights Templar were successful in learning the Gnostic origins of the Hospitallers' beliefs and transmitted their findings to the Pope, who then had the order forcibly expunged in the Albigensian heresy at the beginning of the Inquisition, meant to purge Europe of heretical and anti-Christian pagan beliefs such as Gnosticism. The Knights Templar were sent to the occupied Holy Land to seek the origin for the Asclepian influence of the Christian Hospitaller Knights. The Constantine Cross of the modern medical practice symbol was considered to have implied their knowledge of the true holders of power in Christendom at that time, and to imply the shift in trend from seeing the Pope as Emperor of Christendom towards seeing the Pope as merely the contemporary continuation of Caesar over Rome. The Templars traced the origin of influence on the Hospitaller's symbolism of the Caudice's staff of Asclepius to the faith of Christian Gnosticism in the Holy Land. Christian Gnostics in the Holy Land appeared to have preserved the apocrypha and pseudepigraphal writings of Egyptian Copts and Hebrew Essenes from contemporary to the life of Jesus, without being influenced to adopt the Septuagint Gospels of the Latin Vulgate imposed in European Christendom since the era of Constantine. The Gnostics considered that the Christ worshipped by Catholicism, a degeneration of symbolism signifying the influence of the Demiurge, the Gnostic equivalent to the concept of Satan. Thus, the serpent symbolized Christ as Satan. For their loyal learning of the Gnostic beliefs for the Pope, the Pope in turn dissolved the Knights Templar order, divested them of their property, rewarding it in turn to the remaining hospitalers to remilitarize them as the Knights of Malta, and burn the remaining Templars as heretics. So began the Catholic Inquisition against Satanism and pagan witchcraft in Europe. The Knights Hospitallers were combined with the Knights Templar into the Knights of Malta. The Knights of Malta are still around now, at the turn of the 21st century. They remain in order strictly loyal to the Catholic papacy, though they admit Protestant members as well, and have a permanent member status at the UN. The Knights of Malta were allowed to survive only because they remained loyal to the Pope, who, in turn, answered to the triumvirate of conspirators who really held power. This triumvirate exercised the Inquisition in order to purge the last pagan faiths from organized practice in Europe. However, they could not prevent the loss of medical practice to the private sector due to a shift in economic management that occurred as a result of the European plague, the Black Death, toward the end of the Inquisition. So what the conspirators wanted was to examine the Asclepian tradition's original method of influence on the minds of returning crusaders who had been exposed to Christian Gnosticism while on tour of duty in the Holy Land. They had preserved the military order of the Hospitallers, but had largely lost the practice of medicine to the private sector, and they wanted to know exactly how the Asclepian tradition had caused this. Knowing that Hermes was the father of Asclepius, and having learned from the Inquisition that the cult of alchemists worshipped Hermes Trismegistus, the conspirators wanted to know exactly how the Greek cult of Hermes had influenced the European Gnostics via the Asclepian tradition's influence on the Hospitallers. They needed a European Gnostic to study the meaning of the Caudice's staff of Hermes Trismegistus and to discern the meaning of its dual entwined serpents. To 
To accomplish this goal, the conspirators remotely guided the developing interests of Englishman Dr. John D. D. founded an order of hermetic alchemists who studied the practical scientific applications of contemporary metallurgy toward creating a symbolic alphabet to interpret the pagan religion and translate it into Christian monotheism. The original results were the tarot cards resulting from Dee's study of the hieroglyphic monad symbol of Hermes as the alchemical elementary metal mercury. But Dr. Dee himself was no fool. Living around the turn of the 17th century, he was well educated on the history of Christianity and saw the cross of Constantine as alive and well in the minds and hearts of the modern papal Catholics of Rome. He disapproved of the Crusades and the Inquisition, and was among the Reformation-era Protestants of England, who called themselves Anglican, and who were loyal to the King of England as the head of the Church of England, and who did not answer to the authority of the Catholic denomination of the Christian Church in Rome under the Pope. Dr. D. also studied the Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha of the Middle Eastern religions, and came to the conclusion that Roman Catholicism had indeed been used to marginalize the moral importance of the words of Jesus himself. He believed it was the substance of these apocryphal teachings that was the cause of the split between the hospitallers in Jerusalem into the independent schools of medicine run by his lifetime as state universities. As such, he quickly realized that the conspirators behind the Roman Catholic Pope of his day were the same who had conspired to assassinate Jesus under the state-authorized power of Rome, as well as those in the Roman Senate who had conspired to assassinate Julius Caesar. Knowing the assassin guild within Roman Catholic Christendom, controlled the state authority of the Pope, D. realized his knowledge of the Gnostic Apocrypha to the public in coded format to protect his own life. The conspirators themselves learned a great amount from the work of Dr. D. However, ultimately the greatest threat to their secret authority ever posed evolved from the cult of Hermes formed by Dr. D. Dr. D's Hermetic Order formed the roots of European Rosicrucianism, an anti-papal faith underlying the Reformation era's radical changes to Christian religious doctrine and dogma, begun by Martin Luther, that swept across Europe following the Inquisition. The secret society of Hermetic anti-papists behind the Rosicrucian faith eventually evolved from the survivors of the Templar Purge and, during the Inquisition, had reorganized as the private trade unions and workers' guilds building the Gothic cathedrals of Europe, called Stone Masons. Dr. D's Hermetic Order revealed the meaning of the Caudices of Hermes was the knowledge of double helix DNA by ancient Egyptian magician doctors and this effectively reduced to rubble the significance to all intervening history of the Roman Catholic Empire of Christendom. Dr. D's order represented the final split between the original private practitioners of medicine begun during the First Crusade from the state authority of the Pope of Rome. By the time Dee's original Invisible College of Rosicrucians became the Royal Society for the Study of the Natural Sciences in England, the decline of the era of papal authority signified by the cross had begun. Eventually, the goal of this endeavor was to replace the Roman Catholic concept of Christianity with the Gnostic concept, which had a completely different mythology, cosmology, doctrine, and religious dogma than the Catholic faith invented by the Roman Christian Caesars. It was believed by the earliest Crusaders, the Hospitallers, the Knights Templars, Dr. D. himself, 
the Rosicrucians, and the earliest craft guilds of speculative masons, that the message of the original words of the historical person of Jesus revealed that he himself was a Gnostic. This concept of Jesus not being a Roman Catholic came at the same time as the discovery by Christopher Columbus of a European trade route to North America, and the result was the final overthrow of the symbol of the cross as a symbol for papal power over Europe. The rosy cross symbol of Dr. D's Rosicrucian faith, hermetic secret society, reflected the resurrection of the meaning of Jesus as central to the symbolism and meaning of the Christian cross symbol, and embodied the serpent symbol in the fang-like saying that every rose has its thorn. Thus, the conspirators of the assassin triumvirate who had held power for centuries through the papal authority over Christendom from Rome, were forced to face the moral lesson they refused to learn by sacrificing Jesus and marginalizing his words and their meaning. Dr. D's Rosicrucian Hermetic Secret Society of Speculative Masons became dedicated to overturning the authority of the Pope just as the original triumvirate of assassins had dedicated themselves to the cause of overturning the authority of Caesar. Thus, the Rosicrucian religious faith begun by Dr. D's Hermetic Secret Society was contrary to the Catholic faith in the Pope of Rome as the supreme king of Christendom, however professed itself at the time to be an invisible college because it sought to avoid the sort of persecution suffered by the Templars. Because of this anti-Papist stance, many Old Templars and families of Old Templar Knights and their founding order, the Priory of Zion, were eager to form a real and working secret order to advocate the Rosicrucian religious faith. By targeting the domination over the faith of Christianity, in the empire of Roman Christendom by the Pope, the Hermetic Templar Rosicrucians, who formed Freemasonry, were attempting to topple the authority behind the Pope of the conspiracy of assassins that had held sway since the original assassination of Julius Caesar. Dr. D's Hermetic Templar Rosicrucian Freemasons answer to the secret conspirators' authority was to replace the religion of Roman Catholicism with the religion of Christian Gnosticism. Their goal was to replace the plain, empty cross as the dominant symbol of Christianity, with a symbol that would signify also the importance of the person who was crucified on that cross, whom was the original founder of the religion, killed by the secret conspiracy to be persecuted for his Gnostic beliefs. Thus, the rose cross symbol shows the five-petal rose mounted at the center of a golden Christian cross surrounded by four green thorns on a circular field of white. The five-petal rose was a symbol of man as having two legs, two arms, and a head. The green thorns symbolized the fangs of the serpent symbol of Gnosticism. The cross was of gold to signify the wealth of Rome, and the colors of the red rose and white circle repeated the original Templar symbolism of blood and innocence. Dr. D's original hieroglyphic monad symbol, signifying man as a symbol for alchemical elemental metal mercury, equivalent to Greek Hermes, showed simultaneously the image of a human as two legs, two arms, and a head, and of Christ with the head surmounted by a dual-horned crown, also signifying the contemporary mistranslation of rays from his head as horns of Moses. This made the cross emblem 